In a century soon to come, development of a hyperspace drive will begin a great era of space exploration and colonization. Scattering across the galactic frontier in great space cruisers, pioneers will soon find themselves pitted against the forces of nature. Forces that are blind and deaf. Forces that know neither hatred nor compassion. As colonies are established, the ability to render emergency assistance will become a special problem. On rigid schedules, the great space cruisers will be unable to divert from their computed courses. Instead, they will carry small emergency dispatch ships to do the job. A master computer will determine all necessary parameters, plot all coordinates, balance all equations for the emergency run. The equations will tell what can be done and what cannot. For example, each amount of fuel will not power an emergency dispatch ship with a mass of M plus X safely to its destination. Sci-Fi Radio presents an adaptation of Tom Godwin's story, The Cold Equation. My parents gave me these when I left Earth. Oh, it's so sweet of them. I vowed never to take them off, and I never will. Sounds very strange in this passageway, not like in other parts of ship. We're way away from the passenger deck. I've never been down here before. Maybe we should go back. Oh, come on, Gita. Exploring is fun. Besides, we said we needed to find a quiet place where we could talk. Oh, yes, but... Uh... Look, how about this room? We can work in here. No, no, it ships computer room. Say, signs say off limits. And that just makes it exciting, like an adventure. Come on. Thanks for talking with me, Gita. This will really help me with my Galanese when I get to my mirror. It helps me also. I can get a better job when I learn your language good. <laughs> What's that? Oh, we, we must leave from here. Someone will come. Hurry, they, they must not find us here. Oh, wait a minute. This computer is doing something. Let's see what it is. No, no, must leave. Can have trouble if found here. I, I go now. Sorry. Priority one alert. This is priority one. Priority one. Crew five, stand by for emergency instructions regarding medical supplies for planet Woden. Woden? They're going to Woden? Crew five, proceed immediately to medical dispensary. Emergency medical supplies will be ready for you to transfer to loading bay nine and place aboard EDS-3461. EDS must be ready for launch in precisely 14 minutes. All emergency procedures must be observed. Move immediately. This is priority one. How many serum packs you got there? Uh, let's see. I make it to be eight cases of 24. Mm, that check. Let's get them on board. Jeez, you think they give you more time? At least some warning or something for something as important as this. Ah, quit grousing. How are they going to know ahead of time? Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, that's the last one. How about the fuel level? Did you check it? Sure. It's right on Corecom specifications. It better be. Waste a drop of that stuff and they'll never let you forget it. Crew 5... Crew 5, launch of EDS-3461 is scheduled in nine minutes. Repeat, launch in nine minutes. 
Report immediately to Com Center for Emergency Loading Checkout. Jeez, there's got to be a better way. Come on, let's move. I told you we left that hatch open. They'll bust us for sure if they found it that way. Oh, what do they expect? Rushing us like this. Shut up. Just get it closed. And be sure it's locked, too. Okay, okay. <clears throat> okay, that's got it. Let's go. Attention. Attention. Prepare for arrival of EDS 2108 in Bay 4. Hello, Barton. Welcome back. Thanks, Captain Delhart. Don't get too comfortable. I've got another job for you. Damn. I'm sorry, but it can't be helped. There's just no one else available. We've got to get some serum to Woden, and we've got to do it fast. They've got an outbreak of cala fever there. Cala fever? That's bad business. I'm ready. A tram scooter is waiting. We've got to get you to Bay 9 on the double. 3461 should be loaded and fueled by now. 3461? There aren't too many seconds to spare on this one. I'm on my way, Captain. EDS 3461, Space Cruiser Stardust is initiating drop from hyperspace in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Mark. Normal space-time continuum realized. Is your ship prepared for launch, Barton? I'm on my instrument check now. Sorry about the rush, but you know how it is. Yeah, it's not the first time. We need you out of here in 12 seconds. Is your instrument check complete? What do you think? Corham says you need to be out. I know, I know. I'm ready. Let's go. Let me know when you're clear. I'm clear now. Catch you on the way back. Good luck, Barton. Thanks. Commander Barton... Instrument check is finalized. All readings nominal, with exception of mass factor. What's that? All readings nominal. No, no, no. The mass factor. Explain. Supply hold contains excess mass. Those idiots. Someone's going to pay for this. How could they possibly load an excess? Probability is that excess mass not placed in hold by loading crew... Heat radiation from supply hold suggests presence of life form. A stowaway? But how? Regulations specify I know that the regulations. Notify Stardust. I'm not alone. Damn it, I'm not alone. How could someone get on board? It doesn't even know what this means. Come out of there. I said come out, now. I give up. I'm guilty as charged. Now what happens? Do I pay a fine or what? Who are you? I'm Marilyn Cross. Well, why did you stow away on my EDS? I know it was a stupid thing to do, but you see, my brother's survey crew is on Woden. I found out the cruiser was sending your ship there, and, well, I haven't seen him for almost ten years now. I'm going to my mirror. I'm taking a job there. I specialize in language. Jerry, that's my brother. He's supposed to be stationed there in a year. I know, I know. You think after ten years, one more wouldn't matter much. But I wanted to see him so bad. Anyway, when I heard the starship was sending your EDS to Woden, I decided to stow away. How did you get aboard? Well, it was simpler than you think. I was practicing my Galanese with a friend. Anyway, I heard the orders for a crew to load supplies to go to Woden. I found Bay 9, and when the crew had loaded up, I just slipped into the hold here and hid. It was open. I was surprised no one was watching. I guess everyone was just too busy. Anyway, like I said, it was easy. Then, when you got on board, you were in such a hurry. I guess you didn't have time to check everything either. So here I am. It was an impulse, and from the way you're looking at me, I'm not sure it was a very wise one. No. No. It wasn't. I know there's probably a fine or something. I'm willing to pay the price. Well, this is Stardust. We've received your signal. Come in, EDS. Uh, Barton, EDS 3461. This is an emergency. Give me Captain Delhart right away. Are you going to have them come after me? Won't I get to see my brother after all? 
Barton, this is Delhart. What's this about an emergency? I have a stowaway. A stowaway? That is unusual, but why the emergency call? There's still enough time that there should be no appreciable danger. And I assume you've informed ship's records so that the nearest relatives can be notified. That's why I had to call you first. The, the stowaway is still aboard, and the circumstances are different. Different? How can they be different? You have a limited supply of fuel. You know the law as well as I do. Any stowaway discovered on an emergency dispatch ship shall be jettisoned immediately. Well, what does she mean? The stowaway is a girl. Yes. She's just a kid, Captain. I see. She, she wanted to see her brother on Woden. She's a child. She didn't know what she was doing. So you called me in the hope I could do something. I'm sorry, Barton. There's nothing I can do. The lives of not just one, but many depend on me. I'll have to go through with it. I'll have you connected with ship's records. What did she mean? Did she mean it like it sounded? Yes, I'm afraid she did. No, that's insane. You can't mean it. I suppose I should have told you before, but I, I had to try what I could first. If you make me leave the ship, I'll die. I'm sorry, but it has to be that way. But I didn't do anything to die for. I know that. It's just that... EDS 3461. This is ship's records. What can we do for you? I have a stowaway. A stowaway? It's been a long time since we had one of those. Well, I hope you remember to keep his identification desk. I'll need all the information on it. I've got it. Give me your identification desk. What was the time of execution? I'll, uh, I'll give you that later. Later? That's highly irregular. The time of subject's death is required by regulation... Then it will have to be done in a highly irregular manner. You'll hear the disc read first. The, the uh, subject is a girl, a child, and she's listening to everything we say. Are you capable of understanding that? I'm sorry. I thought you had already... <clears throat> Go ahead. Number T8374-Y54. Name, Marilyn Lee Cross. Sex, female. Height, 1.6 meters. Weight, 50 kilograms. Hair brown, eyes blue. Born July 7, 2160. Oh, dear God, she's my daughter's age. I'll uh, call you later with the uh, other information. I didn't do anything to die for. I only wanted to see my brother. But they're waiting for you to kill me. You all want me dead, and I didn't do anything. I didn't hurt anyone. I only wanted to see my brother. Nobody wants it this way. Nobody would ever let it be this way if it were humanly possible to change it. Then why isn't it? I don't understand. Why do I have to die? This EDS is carrying serum for Kala fever to one of the colonies on Woden. Six men will die unless the serum is delivered on schedule. And these EDSs are given only enough fuel to reach their destination. If, if you stay aboard, your added weight will cause it to use up its fuel before we reach Woden. When that happens, we'll crash. Both of us will die. And so will the six men waiting for the serum. And nothing can be done? No. No one wants me to die, but I have to anyway. Yes. Are you sure... You're positive nothing can be done? I'm positive. She looks bewildered and frightened like a child. A child I'll soon have to kill. We slow deceleration for the time being. Will not give us her much time. The time she needs to accept what must happen. How long do I have? How... How long can I stay? Barton, a check with ship's record shows that you have not completed your report. What's the delay? Have you reduced deceleration? I cut deceleration to 0.9 at 1750 hours. The excess weight factor is 50 kilograms. I'd like to stay at 0.9 as long as CORCOM says I can. Will you feed it the data request? 
It's done. You will resume normal deceleration at 1910 hours. At that rate, your touchdown will be with zero fuel. I understand your dilemma, Barton. Normally, I would never even permit this much. There's nothing else I can do but what I've done. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm scared. I know. I don't want to die. I know there's not enough fuel, but I still don't want to die. H amount of fuel will not power an emergency dispatch ship with a mass of M plus X safely to its destination. The final result of this equation is paragraph L, section 8 of interstellar regulations. Any stowaway discovered in an emergency dispatch ship shall be jettisoned immediately. It's the law. I can bend it for a while. But ultimately, there's no appeal. Can I write a letter to Mama and Daddy? And I'd like to talk to Jerry. Can you get him on the radio? I'll try. Woden, this is Barton, EDS 3461. Come in, please. Hello out there. How's it going, EDS? Sure good to know you're on your way. I need to speak with one of the survey crew members, Jerry Cross. Uh, uh, Jerry's out with two others in the swamp craft. It's, it's almost sundown now. He ought to be back in an hour at most. Can you patch me into his radio? Swamp craft, this is Woden Base. Come in, please. Sorry, EDS, it's out of commission. Is it important you talk to him? I hope it's not bad news. It's very important. Urgent, in fact. When he comes in, get him to the transmitter right away. I'll have someone waiting for him at the landing dock. Is there anything else I can do? Just get him there fast. Will do, EDS. Over and out. Will he get back in time? I think so. I guess I'd better write him, too, in case he doesn't. Will you see that these get mailed? Of course. I suppose they'll have been notified by the time they get these... But these letters are important to me. I understand. I'll see they're taken care of. Do you think Jerry will be back in time? Well, they said he should be in right away. I hope so. I feel sick and scared, and I want to hear his voice again. Then maybe I won't feel so alone. I'm a coward, and I can't help it. You're not a coward, Marilyn. You're afraid, but, but you aren't a coward. Is there a difference? Yes, there is. I feel so alone... I never felt like this before. Like I was all alone and there was no one to care what happened to me. Before, I always had Mama and Daddy and my friends. It doesn't seem right that I'm going to die just for making a mistake. Is it the same with Jerry? I mean, if he should make a mistake, would he have to die for it all alone? With no one to help him? Yes, he would. He never told us that. He didn't tell you his work was dangerous? We mentioned it, but I guess we chose not to believe it. I always thought danger along the frontier was a lot of fun, like in the Holovids. At the Holovids, when the show is over, you can go home. Does it seem cold in here to you? Why, yes, it's, it's colder than it should be. I hope Jerry gets back before it's too late. I'm sure he will. I really want to talk to him. Well, the part of Woden he's on is in the shadow. The revolution of the planet will put him out of contact fairly soon. There may not be much time left to talk to him before he's out of range. He should be back in time, though. I want to say goodbye if I can. I know. If he passes out of range before I get to talk to him, I, I'll just go. I won't wait after that. I won't have anything to wait for. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't wait at all. Maybe I'm just being selfish... Maybe it would be easier for Jerry if you just tell him about it afterwards. I think he would want you to wait for it. Really? Yes. It's already getting dark where he is, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's strange. Mom and Daddy don't know I won't be coming back like I promised. I've caused everyone I love to be hurt, and I didn't mean to do that. It wasn't your fault. They'll know that. At first, I was so afraid to die that... I was being a coward and thinking only of myself. Now I can see how selfish I was. 
terrible thing about dying like this isn't that I'll be gone, but that I'll never see them again. I'll never be able to tell them I didn't take them for granted, or that I knew of all the sacrifices they made to make me happy, or that I loved them so much more than I ever told them. You never tell them things like that when you're young and your life is all in front of you. I guess you're too afraid of sounding sentimental and silly, but it's so different when you have to die. Then you wish you had told them. They know, Mara. Believe me, they, they've always known. Are you sure? Yes, I am. I hope so. They do. I, I promise you. I keep remembering all the things they did for me. Like the night my kitten got run over. I was only six years old and I was crying. And Jerry held me in his arms and wiped away my tears. He told me that my kitten was gone for only a little while. Just long enough to get herself a new fur coat. <laughs> he promised she'd be on the foot of my bed in the morning. I believed him quit crying and went to sleep dreaming about my kitten. When I woke up the next morning, there was my kitten right where he said it would be. And it had a brand new fur coat. Just like he said it would. It wasn't until a long time later that Mama told me how Jerry had gotten the pet shop owner up at four in the morning. I never even thanked him. In fact, I'd almost forgotten it until now. I've been so selfish. I'll never be able to repay them for all the things they've done. But you have repaid them in thousands of small ways. You've forgotten how you did it, that's all. They won't forget, Marilyn. I, I know they won't. I've read how people look who die in space. And I've seen pictures. I hope they don't think of that. I wouldn't want them to remember me that way. You're their child. You're Jerry's sister. They could never think of you in any way other than you would want them to. The way you looked the last time they saw you. I'm still afraid. I can't help it. But I don't want Jerry to know that. If he gets back in time, I'm going to act like I'm not afraid at all. I'll just... EDS 3461. This is Woden. Come in, please. It's Jerry. This is EDS 3461. Hey, have you got Cross there? I'm here. What's the problem? Is it bad news? Uh, hello, Jerry? It's me. Marilyn? What are you doing on that EDS? I wanted to see you, so I stowed away on it. Oh, God. No. Then... I, I didn't know what it would mean. Oh, dear God. I only wanted to see you, Jerry. I didn't want to hurt you. Please don't cry. Please, I'm so scared. Don't let me go feeling like this. Don't, don't cry, honey. You mustn't do that. It's going to be all right. Everything's going to be okay. I'm, I'm sorry I made you feel this way. I just wanted to say goodbye because I have to go in a minute. Sure, sure. I, I, I'm sorry I sounded the way I did. EDS, have you called the Stardust? Did you check with Corcom? I did all that an hour ago. The EDS can't turn back. There are no cruisers within 40 light years, and there isn't enough fuel. Are you sure Corcom had the correct data? Do you think I would let it happen if I weren't sure? He tried to help me, Jerry, but no one can help me, and I'm not going to cry anymore. Everything will be all right, won't it? With you and Mom and Daddy? Sure, it will, honey. We'll make up fine. He's going out of range. He'll be gone in just a minute. You're fading out, Jerry. You're going out of range. We have to say goodbye, but I promise I'll see you again. I'll come to you in your dreams with my hair in braids and crying because the kitten in my arms is dead. Or maybe I'll come as one of those golden-winged marks you read me about. Maybe at times I'll be nothing you can see, but you'll know I'm there beside you. And think of me like that, Jerry. Always like that. Always like that, Marilyn. Never any other way. I've got to go now, Jerry. I love you. She sits motionless in the hush that follows. Then she 
turns to me and says, I'm ready. I wish there was something to say to her. But there's nothing. I let her walk alone, knowing that she wants it that way. It's all right. You can do it now. acceleration. So I wait as the ship drops endlessly downward. The thing is done. Over. Once more, I'm alone. EDS. This is Stardust. Corcom has made all necessary adjustments for ETA on Woden. Your new time is 1937 hours. Noted. For the little good it does you, Barton, it wasn't, it wasn't our fault. I know that. It had to be done. Yes, Captain. I understand. Resume procedures for touchdown. It's strange. I barely knew her, and yet it seems as if she's still here with me. echo hauntingly clear in the void that she's left behind. I didn't do anything to die for. I didn't do anything. The laws of nature are irrevocable and immutable. Man can learn to use them, but he cannot change them. The laws are and the universe moves in obedience to them. H amount of fuel will not power an emergency dispatch ship with a mass of M plus X safely to its destination. A cold equation that has now been balanced. Our cast for Cold Equations featured Rosemary Roundtree as Marilyn and Gary Moody as Barton. Other players included Gloria Hawking as Captain Delhart and Bob Reed as Jerry. Additional characters were performed by Connie Nelson, Dwayne Dancer, Kevin Singer, and Oscar Wills. The original story, The Cold Equations, was written by Tom Godwin and adapted for Sci-Fi Radio by Clay Charles Brown and John Sessions. The episode was directed by John O'Williams. All music and sound effects were created by Ron DiUlio at the studio of Audiovisual Associates in Euless, Texas. The series producers are Kevin Singer and Ron DiUlio. Support for Sci-Fi Radio has been provided by a grant from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. This is James Edward Kerr inviting you to join me soon for our next venture into the imaginary worlds of sci-fi radio.